Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. Well, Donald Trump Jr. just dropped a bombshell and revealed the truth about everything going on with Kamala Harris and with the Democrats. And he also is teaming up with, with his father, Donald J. Trump, to make a very interesting move to save America, right? The whole Trump family is now 110,000% behind Trump and they are really doubling, tripling, quintupling, quadrupling down right now in these, what, what do we have left? Less than a hundred days before the November election. And Donald Trump Jr. is one of them who I want to really highlight this and share it on my show. But before we do dive in, my friends, we are going to read the Bible and pray because God comes first. Amen. Comment amen down below if you believe that God comes first. First, all right, we're gonna do a special Bible reading today about God's love. This comes from the first book of Corinthians. You can read along if you'd like, or just listen. This is from, uh, you can turn to 1 Corinthians 13, uh, starting with verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see, but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Comment amen down below if you believe that. God's love never fails. We need more of God's love in our world and in our nation. We need to stop looking at these false leaders, these false people who promise us goodness and they fail and fail and fail. And you have Kamala Harris saying, don't say Merry Christmas. Stop saying Merry Christmas because it might offend illegal aliens. I mean, what a joke, all right? The people, who, in my opinion, who are actually trying to bring God into this nation is Donald Trump, Melania Trump, that the Trump family. They really do center their lives around God, and they're actually talking about God and bringing back and protecting our religious freedoms, and I can get behind that. All right, so let's get started, guys. He actually just came out with this interview and he just relived the moment that his father was shot and he just revealed the truth about the entire thing. So let's tune in, guys. With us today is Donald Trump Jr. after an assassin tried to kill your father. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure, thank you. So I wanted to ask you, you know, you, I am sure this was a horrific moment for you when you found out that someone had attempted to take your father's life. What was your first conversation with our former president like after this shooting? It actually took a while. I was, you know, it's a Saturday evening. I was with my kids, July, summer, and uh, I got a call. You know, your father's been shot, but that's it. Like, no, no details. Like, is he alive? Is right. he not? Is he... Well, is Can you imagine getting a phone call about your father saying that he's been shot? And, oh, by the way, on his head. Okay, is he... Uh, Took about 90 minutes to actually get through. I guess, you know, with that, they had them all locked down and whatever it may be, and mobile trauma units. Or, and so, you know, I didn't even know. It took an hour for 90 and a half, minutes. Yeah, an hour and a half for me to not know what was going on. And strangely enough, I, during that time, I was just trying to get all my kids together, didn't know if there was further stuff going on or if there right. was, you know. Uh, and so, you know, stayed relatively calm on that, you know, got, got to finally, you know, speak to him. And, uh, you know, by then I'd already seen some of the video, so I was like, okay, then finally got the phone call, and it was you know, me and my brother and Laura and Kim and my daughter and my ex-wife were all there on sort of speakerphone talking yeah. uh, talking to my dad, and, you know, he was just surprisingly upbeat and 
uh, you know, obviously a somber moment, right? But, uh, but you know, surprisingly there that, you know, we even I even got in a hair joke. I was like, is the hair okay after with all that blood? Is it? We, we, we sort of had some fun with it. I think probably all needed a little uh, uh, Trump uh, style uh, uh, icebreaker just to right. kind of, you know, get through some of the, the gravitas of, of everything that went on. And, you know, then you sort of sit down and that's when it all hit you. And it's like, man, that's a, uh, it was a, uh, Pretty, pretty crazy moment. It is crazy that they had to wait 90 minutes to hear anything. I heard uh, that Trump, like they didn't, he didn't have phone access. It was kind of, kind of a strange day for the whole world, especially the family. And I'm sure you, you felt so strongly. What, how did this change how you look at your father? Oh, I, I told him the first thing I got, I go, you know, I, I saw the picture of the sort of defiant, you know, fist pump, you know, after five seconds after getting shot. And, you know, I guess we, we live in an era where everyone, sort of thinks they're a badass because they're on the internet <laughs> and not really up front, but he just got shot and he comes out, you know, sort of defiant, ready to fight for our country. And I, I just said, hey, you're the biggest badass I've ever met. And I probably could not have been legitimately more proud uh, ever, uh, you know, as a son to have that kind of approach. Because again, everyone thinks they're gonna act that way. Everyone wants to believe that they're gonna act that way. But when actually tried, uh, usually it's not the case. You usually wither. And hide. Uh, and, and they actually said that Donald J. Trump was shot at 6 11 p.m. on the dot. And if you take a look, I'll just show you guys real quickly what's Ephesians um, 6 11. We'll just do a six, uh, Ephesians 6 10 through 18. And take a look at this Bible reading. So this is Ephesians 6 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. This is Ephesians 6.11. Trump was shot at 6.11. And do you think it's a coincidence that the Bible verse was put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes? I don't know. And later on it says, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And also, it says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So maybe Donald Trump, he had the shield of faith that he was able to withstand. I mean, ah, oh, what a sad, sad day. And that's not his style. Right. It's not at all. Can I ask you last thing? Are you worried about more political violence and... Do you anticipate that you and your immediate family could also be a target? Um, you know, obviously it's something you think about. I try not to because I, you know, also have to live your life and, uh, you know, do those kinds of things. I know uh, when my father was in office, I had a Secret Service detail and I was, I think, the number two most threatened person in America, according to them. Uh, because like him, I, I sort of, I, I don't just accept the other side's narrative and apologize for it. I push back, I fight and... Wow, he's the second most after Trump. That's crazy. And that's the way I'm sort of built, I guess. Maybe we're all built a little differently. Uh, certainly he is. Uh, I'd like to believe I got some of those genes. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, it, it's definitely a consideration and you've seen the elevation of that over the years. You know, they, they, they couldn't beat him in, you know, in so many ways. So they try to, you know, sue him to death. And then they try to, you know, bankrupt him. And then they try to take away his businesses. And when that doesn't work, they try to jail him. And, you know, it was sort of the natural. Tucker Carlson said this too. He said, look, they're coming. They're going to try to assassinate him. Tucker Carlson said that, guys. Progression. I got in trouble a couple months ago when Tucker said, like, yeah, of course they would try to. And I said, like, yeah, like, I, I, it's totally like in the world in which we live right now, it's, it's totally plausible that they would try to do something like this. And, you know, uh, I got I got criticized. How dare I say that? But here we are. We here are. we are. Trump Jr. was right. Trump Jr. was right. He said he agreed with Tucker Carlson. I mean, this was months ago, guys. They said this is what this is most likely the natural progression that we're leading to is an attempted assassination of Donald John Trump because he's so divisive. I mean, he, he really speaks the truth and it offends a lot of people. Donald Trump offends so many people for actually standing up for what he believes in and standing up for the truth as well. Like all, like all great conspiracy theories, it turns red six months later. Right. I heard Tucker say today that you're maybe his favorite member of the Trump family. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear that, but I, I appreciate it. Listen, he, he's a great friend. I think he's a, he's a true sort of uh, journalist talent. I think he has also, you know, the guts and resolve uh, that, that so many people lack, uh, you know, right now in this country. So I, I, I'm, that's a 
It's about as great a compliment as I can get, I think. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> I agree. Hopefully I'll see them later on. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, thank you so much. We so appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Wow. That was a really cool interview. I loved hearing that from Donald John Trump. And now this is actually the very first time that Trump Jr. was uh, brought back on to Fox. This uh, Fox News actually you know, weirdly has not, he was, they've been refusing to bring Trump Jr. on. It, I think it's been almost a year. They used to have him on almost every week, every month at least. And they stopped bringing him on because, you know, how Fox News got. But now that Trump got shot, now all of a sudden they're coming and begging back Donald Trump Jr. to go back on the show. So let's tune in to Donald Trump Jr. on the show, guys. Uh, you know, they're, they're all in for America. So when you uh, had that moment, you knew he was going to walk out for Monday night. But one of the most for Monday night when President Trump made his first appearance since being shot in that failed assassination attempt. His son, Don Jr., watched the tape, got emotional. This is Trump walking out and you could see Donald Trump Jr. holding back tears as he watched his father at the RNC after assassination attempt. What a beautiful, beautiful moment. Such a sad moment, honestly. You could just see in Trump's eyes. He forever changed. You could see it in his eyes. Trump is a new man. Not like Joe Biden, where Joe Biden's out there and he's, uh, you know, looks completely different. Trump looks actually good. Possible to talk to Don Jr. Right. About right. what he was thinking right. at the time. Right. I'm back to right now. Can, can book him. The guy from Jr. the cutaway shows yeah. up live. We, we, we know a little bit about the pollen that's in the arena. Allergies, guys. Oh, come on. Your father, he got shot. You were, and yeah. everybody was emotional. It, it, it was actually incredible. Uh, you know, and when you juxtapose that to the scene in 2016 at the convention, right? It was very different. There was so much uncertainty about their candidate. And right. like, I almost got on a fist fight with Mike Lee on the floor, who's now like a great friend. That. Do you remember that? It was like, it was, it was so different. The... The love I've felt over the last couple of days here is unlike anything I've seen before. That I mean, you're walking up to grown men who just, you see them welling up. It's, uh, it, it, people Look at that, the whole Trump family together. So cool, so cool to see them all together. Unite behind Donald Trump. Even Baron Trump recently made a massive move to help his father where he coordinated that, it, that huge, huge, huge collaboration between Donald Trump and one of the most popular young influencers in America, Aiden Ross, that got tens of millions of hits. Baron Trump, even him, you know, they're all united behind Donald John Trump, guys. This is epic. Understand uh, exactly where our country is. They understand what's at stake right now, Steve. Uh, you know, they're, they're all in for America. So when you uh, had that moment, you knew he was going to walk out. We weren't sure. We heard that he possibly was going to walk out. Also, prior to that was, who's his running mate? Yeah. And we found out it was flipping. It went up two or three deadlines were pushed yeah. for him to make that decision. Why do you think this decision was so hard? So I, I think he has to find the right mix, the right chemistry. I mean, he's a big sort of chemistry guy to, to work with. You have to. Uh, there's a lot of people, obviously, in politics, many on people's payrolls that sort of give, let's call it, partial advice about things, or they you know, tell you sort of lies by omission to get what they want. And so for me, I, I got fairly involved in the process just because I want to make sure wanted you. that fix. I, I did. I, I've, I've known the guy now for years. Uh, I, I, when his book first came out, I thought it was such an incredible American story. I was like, that guy's got to run for politics. Turns out, you know, years later, uh, he does. Uh, young, intelligent, vibrant guy who also did it in the business world. Uh, it, just the perfect pick. And he just, there, there is a chemistry with my father that I think is perfect. Don, your dad has been impeached. Sorry, Steve. Impeached. Uh, he's been arrested. Now he's been shot. And the left is still questioning his injury. Listen to this. What? No way. They're actually questioning Trump's injury. Are you joking? There are a lot of questions around that ear. Um, and yet there's been no response to that. Um, uh, instead, just showing the, the image of the man coming into, into right. the hall. There was blood dripping down his face, bozo. Oh my gosh. Of course, it's MSNBC. That show completely sucks. Completely and utterly sucks. Let me go wounded ear. A spectacle for this candidate who we know is, by his own admission, obsessed with assorted spectacles. There is a political quest here to mine and use Donald Trump's injury and whether 
his allies and Republicans or the candidate himself do that in a way that overextends their credibility. Then he was just an attempted assassination for crying out loud. Give me, give the guy a break. Will be decided by the voters. They're wondering if he's using this for sympathy. Was it really glass from the teleprompter, not a bullet? He wasn't shot in the face enough for them. It, it wasn't even wow. face. It, it, that's the point. They can't help themselves. Uh, the, you know, the Trump derangement syndrome is real. It, mm. It's so asinine that they could say that. I mean, you see the photograph at the time. There's blood, blood everywhere. Right? You know, see it, the bullets whizzing by his ear. That was an incredible yeah. photo as well. That, but, you know, I don't think any of that matters, honestly. I, they did the same thing to me when I was on the floor. Eric and I were there. We were going to throw my father over the delegate count. It's a huge moment for our family. Uh, and 30 seconds before that, some MSNBC, did your father Hold put on. We've yeah. got the sound bite. Oh, <laughs> good. Roll. Yeah, this was an epic, epic interview, guys. You guys have to watch Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump destroyed destroyed this reporter. Let's tune in, guys. Under constant attack, but it's a different time in America. A lot's happened in 48 hours. Don, what, what is that change going to look like, Don? What Practically, your father, as president, I think you would even say was a divisive figure. What's it going to look like in a second term? I don't think he was a divisive figure at all. I think the media created divisiveness around him. They lied about Russia, Russia collusion. They said he was a traitor. As you were saying, yeah, that wasn't yeah. the part. The that wasn't the whole thing. Let me pull up the whole clip. I got it here on my show, and we're going to watch it. Donald Trump Jr. absolutely destroyed that reporter here. I, I have it right here, guys. Let's tune in. I think J.D. Vance is the best man to run with your father. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. Gosh, why don't we have the clip? Somebody pull up the clip. He said, get out of here, you're a clown, you're a clown. When he, came out here, and he said this to you, he said, he said, oh, will there be another child separation policy you separated him back out cages, before? Yeah. yeah, and well, he said, talking about cages, I'm right. like, it's 30 seconds before this, 48 hours after my father was shot, I go, you mean the Obama cages? Right. And he goes, that wasn't true. I go, but, but it is true, it I mean, it's 100% true, he's been fact checked since. And I just said, you know what, honestly, you're a clown. Yeah, just, just go, go away. away. Just go and away. I, I think, why, would, why am I even wasting my time? Because 48 hours ago, my father was shot in the head. Yeah. And they, they can't stop, right? This, this is the same as what they did with Russia, Russia. Even when they knew it was wrong, they kept going it. It was impeachment one, it was impeachment two. Democrats, just as bad. They're out there, they're trying to bankrupt our family. They're trying to take away my father's businesses. When that doesn't work, they try to throw him in jail. And... You know, of course, when right. when someone spends so, years calling you Hitler and a fascist and a this, and by the way, not just my father, half of the country, it, what, what do you expect? So, Don, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the assassination attempt. I, I, I told Eric, you know, he's normally the chill one. Normally, you're the one that's going. And when I saw Eric upset, then I knew that it had, <laughs> we haven't reached rock bottom. I'm the fire right? breather, you're normally. the fire breather, right? <laughs> the, the president was saying, which, which son said that? Was it Don? It was Don. It was he fired yeah. up. So... We found out that, of, of course, the assassination attempt happened, but then we later find out that the Orions, weeks before, had been planning an assassination, and you would think they would step up the security measures, yeah. but to see such failure there, that has to be infuriating. It, it is. You know, I, I, I'm a pissed off son because of that. And by the way, as a shooter, and, and someone, by the way, I said hi to guys that were part of my detail. So I have a detail. I've had, I have don't have one now, but I had a detail. I've seen my father's for eight years. I shoot with these guys because I'm a competitive shooter. I, they're not afraid of a little sloped roof. That's right, nonsense. Right. They don't let, unless there's a major breach or they're told not to do something, they don't let... Yeah, oh yeah, that sloped roof is really, yeah, that sloped roof is really too much for the Secret Service. Give me a break, Cheadle. Give me a break. I'm glad you resigned. But you know what? You should have been fired right after that. Guy with a rifle be on a roof for half an hour inside 150 yards. Like, for people who aren't shooters, 150 yards is like a six-inch putt, right? It's yeah. like, it, you... It's almost Slayer. impossible Slayer. to miss. That's why I say, like, this is divine intervention, right? There's, there's no way. It's almost yeah. impossible. Wow, Donald Trump Jr. Claiming that God saved his father's life. Now we know Trump Jr., he supports God. To miss that. 
And, uh, you know, so, no, I, I am upset because that's true. I don't think this threat was tied to Iran. By the way, I think an Iran threat may be like one of the greatest endorsements in the history of politics, right? right? Yeah. If Iran hates you, like if our biggest enemies hate you, it's probably a, a, a good thing, sure. right? It's like, so, what are you saying, Don, the, the factor? Why was he left up there? If, if everything you said is true and yeah. the slope of a, a roof is, is, is not yeah. a big deal and they had this guy on the side 30 minutes prior and they had people saying while your dad was talking, Look up on the roof. That guy's got a gun. What do you What do you think? It just a, a, a major breach. And again, I don't want to be the guy doing conspiratorial. I'm sure plenty of people will. And I think honestly, all of those questions are fair game because it is so. Ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, why? How were they able to just walk around up there for 30 minutes? People are yelling at him. I mean, it's absolutely insane. It is absolutely insane, my friends, and it's shocking to see now. Here's Donald Trump Jr. talking with Alina Haba on his show. I wanted to just play a little bit of this because I think it's really cool. Let's tune in, guys. I'm blown. It, it, was, uh, it was crazy, but in the conversation I had with him afterwards, literally the first thing I said to him was like, you're the biggest badass I know, and he's laughing about that. He, he, he goes, so, are you, are you upset that I'm the first person to get shot at? I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, hey, just because I love shooting doesn't mean I want to get shot. Like, it's not the same, Dad. It's not the same. I mean, we're literally like, and it, it was funny. And, and I think he, you know, it was, it, it was a very somber moment as well. We're joking about, but I think it was like a little bit of like, that's how we, like, yeah. we're ball breakers, right? Yeah. Like, it was a little bit as of that. My, as you know. A, a, yes, exactly. I mean, it was a little bit of that stress relief, right? Yeah. He's, he's, he's doing that. And I'm like, so listen, you know, you're just gonna let the ears stay that way. It's like you could be in good company with like Evander Holyfield, like a good friend of ours, and like. Oh my gosh, I love how they were joking right after he got shot, guys. That's absolutely incredible. Now I wanted to play this little uh, uh, special interview between Donald Trump and his son Trump Jr. because I, I just think it's really cool, and I think more people should see this, guys. A couple questions that I think are on all of the minds of our Trump child which is the big one also on my mind is, which is your favorite Trump child and why is it Ivanka? <laughs> the wise guy over here. <laughs> All the same, 100%. 100%? 100%. And I'll even say you only for purposes of this interview. But other than that, all the same. Okay, well, I'm going to remember that, okay? So that's... <laughs> How cool is it that Trump is just sitting there with his son? Talking. I mean, Trump looks so calm and collected here. I love to see this, guys. Okay, we got to talk to Twitter because I have had a couple calls from you from the White House uh, saying, you know, Don, maybe you're getting a little hot on social media. That's true. Do you understand irony and, and, and how that works? I do. <laughs> and I think that uh, you're getting a little hot on Twitter sometimes. <laughs> you know, uh, it's really, I don't call it Twitter, I call it social media. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of getting out to the world. And you get out to the world, too, on my behalf and on the country's behalf, because you want to see good things happen. And uh, sometimes you'll say things that you probably regret. How often does that happen to you? Well, yeah, it's an interesting question. There are probably times I regret it, but I've, I've sort of learned, and I think we've probably seen in the last week, sometimes sort of taking it back rather than just owning it is actually worse. Uh, you know, it's sort of the apology for something that doesn't necessarily need an apology. Maybe it's a hot take, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. I mean, I think the one we saw last week was Drew Brees. Uh, you know, what, what do you think about him sort of cowering to the mob uh, and, and that whole controversy? So I watched his first statement, which was uh, a beautiful statement. Mm -hmm. Proud of the flag, proud of the country, proud of everything. Talk about his father and his grandfather yeah. serving. And then the following day, it was almost like I take it back. I was shocked uh -huh. because I consider him a great football player, but I consider him a champion and a star. I feel like there was like some money involved there for some reason. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, let, let's tune in to Donald Trump Jr. here talking about J.D. Vance, guys. To the former president's son? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Trump, the reaction just came in. It is going to be Senator J.D. Vance. What is your reaction to this? I, I'm incredibly excited. J.D.'s become a really good friend of mine over the last few years. I think he helps us across the board in so many of the swing states that are going to be so critical. His story uh, is just an incredible one. It's the American dream. It's a, about total success. 
Uh, he's just going to be an incredible pick. The former president endorsed Shady Vance in his Senate race. It was really a bright spot for Republicans in what was really a disappointing year. What are you hoping that he brings to this ticket? The same energy he's brought Republicans in the United States Senate, I want to see on this ticket, and I think he's going to do that for sure. You're very close to Senator J.D. Vance. You said there's a lot of acquaintances in politics, but you consider him a very close friend. This has been a oh, wow. public audition process, vetting process, to be Donald Trump's running mate. What do you make that it's now him? Well, I'm, again, I'm super excited because I know the man, I know the character, I know his resolve. I, there's, there's no weaknesses there. I'm just super excited about it. Thank you so much, sir, for the time. I really appreciate it. Well, there you have it. That is the former president's son. That's really cool. I didn't know that they were actually friends there. I mean, that, that's really something special. Now, I wanted to just play this uh, clip of Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump actually speaking about the... Uh, Hush money trial, this is actually pretty recent, so let's tune into this, guys. Doubt. And this entire case hinges on someone who has quite literally lied to every single person and body he's ever been in front of. He's lied before, I believe it's every branch of Congress. He's lied before his wife, he's lied to bankers, he's lied to all of you in the press. And he's actually lied to that very jury, and yet he's the only person of relevance that this entire case hinges on. Talking about, uh, I believe, I would, I think he's talking about Michael Cohen. <laughs> um, because I can't think of anybody else. We understand that this is a political persecution. That was evidence today. That's crazy, guys. Absolutely crazy. Now, here's Donald Trump Jr. with his uh, daughter, Kai, right before, I guess, they were getting ready at the RNC. Kai, what do you think? Getting makeup make me look sexy like you? Thank you, Kai. I'm glad you think I look very beautiful. <laughs> They're just joking around. In HD, you better do it. They're just joking around, having a good time. And then that was obviously before they shocked the world when they did that speech together. I mean, it, it was such an incredible, beautiful speech where um, he spoke and his daughter spoke. And it was, uh, you know, just really, really special to have to, both of them speak together. <laughs> Donald Trump Jr., and his daughter, Kai Trump, both speaking. So anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts on Donald Trump Jr., but he just revealed the truth. Let me know your thoughts down below.